Welcome everybody back to Boost Motion, guys, and today we're going to talk about it. 10 ways that the new Nissan GTR R36 is going to shake up the car community, period. So guys, let's go. Let's jump into it. First thing, shout out to my Boost Motion family. I know you guys have already hit the like button. Thank you guys for your support. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching those ads also. And if you're new to the Boost Motion channel, I am Boost Motion. I'm a car enthusiast, Nissan Fini enthusiast, but also I report the news. So guys, let's go. Let's jump right into it. So... 10 ways a Nissan R36 GTR EV will shake up the electric sports car segment. All right, so we're going to go through this article. We're going to see if there's any truth here. What's my assumptions? And honestly, where is the future headed? Okay, first they're saying is it will be one of the quickest GTRs yet. Now, I did come out with a video. I don't know if I dropped it before or after, but I talked about 10 of the, the, the ten top 10 predictions based on the top speed article on what the next GTR would be. So I already agreed, it will be the quickest GTR yet. Yes, we've already seen that hybrid performance, hybrid vehicles perform better than their gasoline cars. I mean, the gasoline um, brothers or uncles or whatever you want to call them. They, they perform a lot faster, period. So there's no point even reading this part because it's going to, even though the car may have more weight, they can discharge these systems that can add, add additional 200, 300 horsepower and almost close to 500 pounds more of torque. So they, even though they add, have the added weight, they can make it up in just torque and power alone. Two, it will destroy the Tesla and the Porsche. Now, the GTR, the GTR has always been thrown in the 911 sites, and that has always been the benchmark sports car. In the EV world, they're one of the most ones to measure up against is the Porsche Taycan and Tesla Plaid. And I have already said it, and I'm going to say it again. If they decide, if Nissan can't decides to make a four-door full EV, this is separate, full EV, um, four-door GTR, right? EV, right? They have the technology. They've been developing these electric cars before Tesla. Nissan knows what they're doing with electric cars. So I definitely think they can make a car, a four-door EV performance car, close to the price of a Tesla Plaid. Because a Tesla Plaid is not a luxurious car. It's a regular eco car with electric motors. That's really all it really is compared to like a Porsche Taycan, right? So I can see Nissan doing this. Three, it would make the GTR, Nismo, GTR obsolete. I don't think it'll be obsolete. And I'm going to be very fair when I sit there and say this. No. There'll be the people who buy the R35 GTRs. And there's going to be people who buy the new R36. That is all. People are still going to love the sound, the tuning, modifying these cars, making these cars fast. That will still always be there. You can't take that away. Sorry, no disrespect to Tesla owners. The Tesla Plaid, once again, I've never driven it. But from knowing what Tesla is, is a A to B electric car. It, it's, it's an iPhone on wheels. It's for that group and segment of people. So the people who purchase the Tesla Plaid are two people. Either they're a car person that want to have a fast car but not kill the earth, right, have any emissions. Or two, they're just people who really want the best electric car that is like an iPhone. That's it. They're not really car enthusiasts. You know, so I don't think it's going to make it obsolete. People are always going to still buy the GTR regardless. Three, the return of the four-door GTR. Yes, if they do decide to make an EV version that's four-door, that's separate than from the GTR hybrid model, yes, I can see that actually happening. The most practical GTR to date. Yes, GTRs have always been practical. They've always had two seats in the rear. Uh, they always had a usable trunk. And you can use it every day, every, all day. So I can see them making a two-door hybrid vehicle and still making them pretty practical for the average person, especially if it's plug-in. And if they make the four-door version that's full EV, I see the same thing happening there. It's a four-door car with a trunk. And usually when it's a let full EV car, they can add more space to the trunk and they can add more space to the cabin because they can put the batteries at the bottom of the car. So I can see this being very practical. Six. The first GTR to share hardware with Infinity. Now, guys, remember, Infinity Q60 Black S was the test mule for the GTR. We already been talking about this on the channel for years, for years. We knew that the, we really want the Q60 Black S to come out. For people who don't know what that is, the Q60 Black S was is pretty much the VR30 um, engine that's currently in the new Nissan Z. It's in the Q60. 
and Nissan and Infiniti designed well Infiniti designed it with the Curse system. Pretty much it's a regenerative electric powered system that recoups a lot of energy and disperses the energy quickly with uh, on electric motors. So it was pretty much a VR30 twin turbo V6, right? The turbos are tur or the turbos are electric assist the turbos and then it had a rear drive axle uh, electric motor on the rear drive axle and it was all the drive. So a system that's very similar to that that's going to come out this year is going to be on the new Mercedes C63S, which is pretty much a four-cylinder, single-turbo electric assist, and rear axle is also, um, the rear axle is also two-stage or two-final-drive ratio electric motor diff. So, it's a complex system, and the new GTR is that. Infinity is not going to, Nissan Infinity is not going to spend all this money on technology and not come out with it. They, Nissan knows what they're doing. They've been messing with this stuff for years, even outside of this project. Despite having a fair share of good models, Nissan luxury arm Infinity has always been identified, had always identified crisis, identity crisis. Uh, going faster, past the 2023 GTR for which Nissan trademark R hybrid nameplate. They trademarked. Our hybrid nameplate could feature the high hybrid tech from Nissan GTR LM Nismo developed in LMP1 hybrid class. That one packs a VR30 DD TT based twin turbo six, which may be found in a hybrid GTR. The GTR has never been a the GTR has never been a parts been special, but this could lead to further sharing technologies. We are already seeing the new Nissan Z, which packs the same V6 twin turbo. We don't need to talk about that part. Seven, Renault may be a stake in developing the GTR EV. So back in 2018, we heard that how, how Infiniti Nissan will get six or 12 EV models planned for the Renault slash Mitsubishi slash Nissan Alliance, which I think they need to get rid of Renault. At the time, EV had two, uh, two had two EV slots lo located, meaning other four were going to be Nissans. Infinity Q inspiration and concept. And I remember a lot of these vehicles they were talking about bringing out, but I think because of the the stuff that happened in the world in the last two years, in 2020 and 2021, and even 2022, it put a lot of that stuff on ice because they're not making that much more money and honestly the market dictates where we go and honestly they were trying to force electric cars very fast but not, the world isn't ready for them at least america is not really ready for them because infinity is in america so the q55 uh, uh the other logical step would be a compact crossover as equivalent as a q55 or new electric version of a Q30, which was based on a third generation Mercedes A-Class. Nissan already has uh, the Aria and the Leaf as global EV models. Aria is not really in America. Like, it really isn't, but the Leaf definitely is. As for Renault, the French company has been a fair share of performance vehicles, among which the Alpine A1110, and the Renault also unrevealed its A1110 concept, which was powered by a, re a Renault Nissan developed VR30 VQ35 DE. This is back in um, 2012. Okay, last two guys. Let me just speed through it. It will make performance EVs more affordable. I'm just going to leave it as this. It sounds like it'll be affordable, but not for the average day person. It's a GTR. GTRs are $120,000 new now. So I don't see them going back on the price. Now it's going to have additional technology. Now it could be a plug-in hybrid and all this. No. I see this car being definitely over hundred grand, and the top model being well over $200,000. So I don't see it being affordable. Now, if it's the Ford, if they do decide to make a four-door all-electric EV, then I could see it being more similar to the price of, let's say, like a a tesla plaid or if they want to make a detuned or de-electric version i could see it definitely being under a hundred thousand dollars and being just more of a regular day uh non-plaid but i don't see them doing that for a gtr uh ev version in a four-door they would want to make it a killer um it will be the ev sport car with the longest production cycle uh, the Nissan GTR was produced 15 years, which was way too long for a, a high-performance car. This is especially true if the heavily competitive environment in the industry continues currently is currently in, and typically the first road cars to get the latest tech of high-performance cars like the GTR. Eh, would it be the longest production? It's saying it really would be 
I don't think it would really run with the same R35 name, but technically, the GTR has been running for a very, very long time. Lastly, an all-electric R36 GTR would be the benchmark for years to come. I doubt it. I doubt it. I think Nissan is late to the game. I think that they can come out with a car that will be a killer. I can see them making a performance hybrid GTR plug-in. I see them making it. But I see that car being heavy as hell. I see that car being like 4,500 pounds plus. I see the car being two doors, once again, with the rear, the two plus two seating. Um, I see it possibly being a hybrid. I see the whole curse system, and I see it being a three liter V6, and I see it being Nissan quality. So it's, it'll be nice, and it'll look dope, and it'll look adventurous. It'll be a very good looking car uh, for what they would want to go in the future. I, I can see it having those edges, because I can see what Nissan's doing now with their vehicles. But I don't think it'll be a benchmark. I think they'll make the car insane. Like, it'll be like a low 10-second car from factory. And But I think it will just stop there. Because all the other manufacturers have already been playing in this spectrum, too. I'm not saying Nissan's been doing it for a long time. But all the other manufacturers are making four bangers and other... Uh, uh, Six cylinders. Like if BMW wanted to make a performance hybrid, let's say M3, it will be God. I'm being honest with you. A performance M3, M4, like EV, uh, hybrid EV, will be God too. That car will, I'm sorry. I just don't see GTR really holding up, R36 holding up, holding it up. It's just so much other manufacturers now that know what the hell they're doing that can give very similar reliability and really honestly have a lot more money to throw at it. So I don't see it being the benchmarks the years to come. I see it being one of the cars you can choose from, but there's going to be cheaper options if you go with a hybrid model going in forward or maybe even a full EV if they do decide to make an all, all, all electric EV. But outside of it, guys, you have a good morning, good afternoon, good night. Thank you guys for banging with your boy Boost. You know I talk too much. I just wanted to give you guys my honest opinion on where we're going in the future. So you can add me at Boost Emotion IG, Facebook. Also, you can add me at Boost Emotion at gmail.com. Otherwise, night, guys, I appreciate you guys for always showing support. You guys have a good day. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.